Good day, everybody. Welcome to Board Game Giants. And I am very pleased to have my next guest, Mr. Matt Wilkins, on here. He's a good friend of mine and actually one of the first people I met board game wise on uh, when I started my channel. And uh, there he is. So I'll let you enter. I'll let him entertain you for a minute. <laughs> Matt, how are oh, you, sir? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a long time. You you just keep I keep I keep emailing you and calling you and requesting. You're like, yeah, maybe sometime. I'm kidding. It's the exact opposite. I've been so busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of what universe that happened, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, you, you tried you tried to get me to do this last year. I was like, dude, I got game. This is before I had this shelf up here. And mm -hmm. a lot of these games that you see, at least half of them or more of all all of those up there. Um yeah. Those were all stacked in here on the floor and everything. I said, dude, I got boxes and boxes right now. I need to get the I get get this set up. And I did get it set up, but I already I have games on the floor. But that's because I have games I'm about to review and stuff. <clears throat> how's, stuff how's, the, how's the game reviewing coming? Have you done anything recently? The, I'm sorry, the what? Have you done anything uh, recently as far as a, a board game review? Uh, yeah, right now, right now I'm just going through ranking my all the games in my collection. I think I'm in the top 200 now. I have 248, so I'm doing ranking videos from here to the end of the year. Okay, excellent. Uh, kind, well, of, anybody, kind of a yearly thing I do. I already did it for vintage board games. Yeah, I you know I've done the vintage ones myself. I just haven't had much change, so I I haven't done a new list yet. But I figure if I get about 25 more games, maybe I'll do it. Uh, but um, I will say Matt has an excellent channel, and if you are a Star Wars fan, he has a, the channel called Star Wars Expanded Universe, um, and it's a universe all of its own. Um, yeah. Now, Matt, you had that you started doing the Star Wars thing a while ago. Did you do board games soon after that, or yeah, actually, that board games came first? Um, oh, they were well known for them. Board games came first. I uh, think the first video, I believe, I did was conquest of the empire I, I i i wanted to make a video so that i remember i would remember how to play the game without having to read the rule book and maybe i should re-review that because i put a house rule in there as yeah. a rule I, and but because no one was watching my channel i had like 20 something people you know subscribed and so right. i just put down a rule that we had had in our games that i just put down and a billion people were commenting on that for years going, this is wrong. This is not, a, that's not the rule. And I was like, guys, it's a house rule. Chill. I was like, what are you doing watching my video anyway? Watch someone else's video. I, mean, I, was, I was like yeah. so confused. Why are you even watching this video? And, yeah. um, <laughs> and then from there, I used to do zombies whenever, because I love the board game zombies. So I'd review the zombie board game and I yeah. made little noise. I made little noises. I, I was just being, I was being stupid for my gaming group. Uh -huh. who would uh who would come in i don't know who that is who is that that is know. that i don't know that that guy ever ever since you know they they remember that guy with the big hair that used to be on the island that I was one of the, what they have a new guy on the island now and i just i'm starting to get comments now i'm gonna go ahead and get to them let's see matt is probably mm -hmm. the only person i know who's played everything in his collection True, I haven't played everything in my collection yet. <laughs> no, no shelf of shame. No, Bernardo's probably the one who has the biggest shelf of shame of, out of all of us. And Bernardo, right now, there are two games in my collection. No, three, if you count that expansion um, games, I have uh, not played yet. So, but I'm getting to them. I'm getting to them. Yeah, I've got, well, let's see. I have uh, a game called Summit I haven't played yet. And then we have Fortress America we haven't played yet. Uh, and a few of those. Eventually, eventually we'll get to them when we have time to learn them. Here we got a Felicia. She says, mm -hmm. "I love board games in hundreds. About eighty different Monopoly games. That's awesome. Wow, that's about seventy more than I have." <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. this guy's reviewed most of them, Felicia, which is probably mm -hmm. how you found his channel. He's yeah, big, I have one Monopoly game that I absolutely love. Don't know if Felicia has it, but it's called Monopoly Gamer Mario Kart. I think that oh. game is so stinking fun. That's probably one of my favorites because I, I grew up playing Man or Mario and everything. But you did a you yeah, did a top for, you did a yeah, top five was, top ten Monopoly games, didn't you? I think it was number two or number one. I can't remember. Yeah, which. yeah, yeah. I remember that because that was was what a year ago. 
Yeah, it was about a year yeah. ago or so when I did. <clears throat> I remember that because because the thing is, and and it's thanks to this guy that I've I've discovered that Monopoly just isn't Monopoly anymore. There's different versions. There's mm -hmm. different things. You have all the gamer ones. I almost got the Mario gamer one, just the regular Mario. I said, that's neat. And uh, but then I heard Mario Kart was coming. I was like, oh, wait, I'll hold off for Mario Kart. And that's a great game, too. Do you have uh, the little uh, expan or the expansion characters with it? Yes. Yes. I got all the little because you could uh, Toys R Us was going out of business back then. And mm -hmm. they had flashed the price 50 percent off all the little extra packs. I think they were going for like five bucks, weren't they back then? And yeah. so I got I got them for like two fifty each, which was a good deal back then. Yeah, they went up in price, especially Bowser. I remember she has the white box collection, the nice one. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's the you one with the. Uh, Felicia can correct me if I'm wrong. That's the one I believe with the plastic coins and everything. I mean, that's the really upgrade. I looked at getting getting that a long time ago. I didn't know about it. Yeah. I didn't know about the, the white the white box edition, but that's a really nice one. You got mm -hmm. that one. No wonder you have you have so many Monopoly games that so they're all high quality like that. But no, you were the one that kind of showed me that uh, Norm. There's more to Monopoly than just base Monopoly. Yeah, um, the, here's the funny thing: Monopoly, the regular Monopoly, isn't like a favorite of mine. Uh, you know, I might pull it out because everybody already knows how to play it. Right. But, uh, I prefer the 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 exp the uh, new editions like like the villains is really good. I love that one, um, and I love Mario Kart and Overwatch was really good too. Um, have you played that one yet? <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not. Most Monopoly, most of the new Monopoly games, I have not played. Yeah, well, they're definitely they definitely go by a lot faster, and um, you know it it just kind of has the base Monopoly, but as you know, they've changed so many of the rules to make it you know, shorter. And, uh, I enjoy them. Oh, no. And, 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 and it's like making it shorter is one and making them fun and unique is another. Yeah. I, um, let me see. There's one I have, I just got called Monopoly stock exchange It's a Waddington's version. Um, that's so the cool. one where, uh, it has a little stock market machine or whatever, and the stock prices go up and down and you're buying companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but, uh, I'm going to eventually play it. It, it looks it's pretty. It looks pretty interesting. All right, I'm going to take a look at this here. Uh, Felicia, get a hold of me so I can do an interview with you on Board Game Giants. I'd love to interview you. Yeah, uh, Felicia, and you are the next guest. See, already my time is ticking. My time's up here. Norm's like, I've already heard everything I need to from this guy. So next, next. I would like well, to see that. Really Eighty different games. That's awesome. Yeah, you're the one charging me like ten dollars a minute. So. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'll, let's see. How? When did you start? Uh, uh, let me just say it here. Like, Which one? How far oh, back do you want me to go? Uh, like, uh, I guess vintage. Um, was there like a? Did you start collecting vintage first, or did you start? Uh, yeah, that it was. It was. It was in a way. Um, the I had the old version of Conquest of the Empire growing up. Loved it. Loved it to mm -hmm. death. And then I heard that Eagle Griffin Games, I did not know who they were back then, but I'd heard they reprinted it. And I was like, that was one of my favorite games. So I was like, all right, so let me let me go uh, check that out. And I bought it. And I absolutely loved that game. And I thought it was just great. And I had a few friends over here and there. No one's really playing board games back then. And I played it a few times. Most of the times, I just bring it out on the floor because it's a huge board. I bring it on my floor and I just play all six armies by myself, you know, just to see how it go. And you know, and I, I would just have just a great time just doing that in my spare time. And uh, then vintage games started getting when I started getting into board games, period. There was a lot of the vintage games I wanted back. Mm -hmm. Some of the classics like Monopoly, Life, uh, you could you could you Battleship. You could get these things at uh, flea markets and uh, antique stores for like pennies on the dollar. Like 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 you have in your videos found the same games. I was like, well, I'll pick these games up. I remember playing these games and, you know, Boggle and stuff. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Well, then that's when I started realizing that there was more to vintage games than, you know, your average roll and move. And as I started learning about these different types of games that were out there, I was like, this is very interesting. Now, a lot of this stuff on eBay wasn't the prices weren't too high. And at stores and especially at Comic Cons, 
you could get vintage games for really cheap back in the day. Yeah. I'm back about 10 years ago or whatever. They weren't charging an arm. I mean, like I told you, I got it from the pit for 30 bucks. I, th I thought it got cheated. I was like 30 bucks. Yeah. That's like full price. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, now that games goes for over a hundred. But the thing is though, um, as I started collecting all these, vin I started liking vintage games because a, my, my, the missus will play vintage games. My wife will play vintage games with me. Um, the regular games that you see back here, she won't play those, but vintage yeah. games, she's all up for a vintage game. So, that's why the focus was on vintage for so long because that was the one that she, she would play with me. And I had a gaming group that we would play vintage every once in a while. Not that, not that much. Cause back then I thought, well, you know, adults are generally not going to like it, but that's not true. Right. You know, I, I learned that really quick because I think we had vintage night for, we used to have a, um, a board game, a, a, a girl's night of board games and waffles girls night plus me. Um, right. And so uh, for them, I only brought out uh, vintage games and they're like, this is they, they don't they stopped coming to the mixed, you know, because I have the boy, I have guys and girls and then the girls wanted their own separate ones. So I gave the girls their own separate night. But they right. they said, why don't you play vintage games for on, on the regular nights? They said, we don't even go to those anymore because we like girl nights because y'all you bring out the vintage games. I went, oh, OK. Yeah. And so then we started doing it for the. For both nights, and of course, everyone started loving them. Because I, but for me, I just thought, oh, well, the game's so simple, then they won't have that much fun. You know, it has to be advanced, but it doesn't have to be advanced. It, the yeah. game just has to be fun. Yeah, I, I think when I first started collecting games, it was thrifting. You know, most of the games were going to be were older games, and yeah. I guess as I collect, started getting these games, I started to discover, wow, these games are pretty cool. You know, oh, yeah. and uh, you know, I couldn't really find any information about them online. Um, you know, so well, I'm, I'm glad well, if that you think about it, there really wasn't. I told you this a long time ago when, when we first yeah. met us, it, it was just as, as far as I remember, there was the retro board gamer and he was one of the only people I knew and his information back then you couldn't find him. I was like, where he didn't have his own channel. What's up with that? Cause I was, I was ready to, you know, the only reason I subscribed to uh dice tower for so long was because of him. Cause he would do yeah. another uh, a video review every week or month or whatever. And, uh, within well, you, I found you. And then, uh, we started talking. I said, I think we're one of the few people. And now if you look at these people, we got that weirdo from tabletop Island. We got <laughs> that other weirdo who lives up in his attic. And then yeah. the other weirdo who's raiding addicts now. I mean, it's just really weird. All these other, I mean, we're the only two normal people in this business still, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Maybe another normal person will show up eventually. <laughs> you got that. You got you got you got a crazy person. You got crazy people on both sides of the map. There's you know crazy in New York. There's crazy in California. I mean, there's That's just crazy, crazy everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna take hits at everyone you've had on this channel so far that I know. <laughs> Here's one question: Do you guys keep a lot of the games from your childhood, like the original? That's from Bernardo. Um, uh, go ahead. Most, I think pretty much all the ones that I had as a child, we either gave away or threw away. Um, I don't have any of the originals uh, from when I was a kid, but I do have, I did get like games like Crossbows and Catapults that I had when I was a kid. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I have a few games from my childhood. How about you, Matt? I only have, well, I mean, I mean, of course I have games that I played, but they're not the original game. You're talking about the original game that I had growing up. The only right. one is bumper cars because bumper cars uh, was my at my grandmother's house. And when she uh, passed away, my brother was clearing out the house and he saw the bumper cars game. He went, oh, my brother would love he loves board games. He'd probably like this game. And so he brought me the game and I was like, yeah, dude. And that's and it's still a great game. Bumper cars. It's, it's, yeah. it's so fun. That one comes out a lot. I do. I do some uh, I used to do dinner theater a lot. And yeah. during the dinner part, you had to sit there for like 30 minutes and do nothing. It was boring. And so I would bring bumper cars and we'd play bumper cars and we had a great time. That's yeah, a fun game. So I got that one, uh, I think off of Facebook, I think. And I think I got it because of your review. Um, yeah. Oh, I remember yeah. the first yeah. review I saw of yours was, was Feudal, the 3M bookshelf game. Yeah. Uh, I had, uh, I don't even Chad know how to do like those but yeah uh, i think that's how we had first met let's yeah, see I, well, 
I remember seeing your 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 video of uh, when you were doing a big game hunting, and uh, you went to a store that I just left like a week earlier. I was like, I know where this dude is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she loved it. Rummy, Rummy Cube's a great. Let me tell you something, Felicia. Rummy Cube was my grandmother and my mom's game. I always jumped in on games of Rummy Cube. It's it's mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a popular one. That was a popular one when my grandmother was around. That when my grandmother was around, that's what we played. That was great. Racco, yeah. I know. Battleship was one of my favorite games. Personally, even when I was a kid, I've always hated Clue. That's just me. Yeah, um, yeah, and you see, I play. I like Roman Cup and Racco and Battleship. I um, what was a version of Battleship. Uh, we have the Star Wars Battleship, the electronic one. That's a cool version. If you, uh, I don't know if you have yep. that, Matt. I, I, I had it, but I gave it to my nephews years ago because they thought it was really cool. And uh -huh. I didn't want that. That version is neat because it plays the sounds and everything. But I wanted the original version because that's what I grew up on. The little pegs, non-talking. Mm -hmm. So I let them have my Star Wars one. And I had an original copy of Battleship. Oh, yeah. I have. Uh, I don't know how many I have. Copy, maybe a couple of copies. Do you guys have a savers? I don't have a savers over here. I wish we did. No, no, no. We don't have nice stores like that. <laughs> Let's we don't have we don't have a great uh, flea market or antique store in town. We yeah, have a place like, in the alley, but I rated that a long time ago. It has zero churn, meaning they don't get new stuff in. They just sell what they got, and that's it. And I mean, every once in a while they may get more furniture, but they don't practice on knickknacks that much. So sad. Yeah. Like I went back, what last year I think with Megan, we kind of shopped around. They had the same exact stuff they had 10 years ago. I mean, that's been oh, my experience. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one from Matt or Bernardo. Isn't Matt the guy that feeds bologna to his stuffed animals? I'm glad I'm weird. <laughs> I heard Bernardo just bought Dream Foam for $140. I'm kidding. Really? You know, I, my yeah. friend uh, Brittany had that game, and that, that's actually one of those cheesy games I would probably play again just because the voices on the phone are so bad. <laughs> well, that, that, that's the thing. If, if we ever meet up again, our, our next playthrough is going to be through dream phone. Yeah. I'll, I'll play it with you. I just, just no done. It's done. It's done. <laughs> done deal. <laughs> what is your, uh, one from Felicia, what is your quick pick and play go-to game that you could play every day? I love my Vegas dice game. So much fun. Yeah, is that now? Let me ask you something. That's the that's the new um, one that came out not too long ago. Is that from? Is that the same as Las Vegas, the dice game Las Vegas? I know yeah, what he's talking see. about. I just don't know if it's the same game where you're rolling dice and assigning those dice to certain casinos to get the money yeah. that's at the bottom. Because yeah. if it is, that's that's an incredibly fun game, and I don't know because they did another box game. I thought it was a reprint called Vegas. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's just like the Las Vegas game, which is out of print now, which is sad. I mean, but it doesn't take much because just excited die of different colors. You know, you just you pick one color and that's the die you roll. That's a fun mm -hmm. game. That's a fun game. Yeah, they had it at Walmart for a little while. Um, if it's that dice game you're talking about, I don't think they yeah. have it anymore. That one, if you're talking about dice games, you got that one. You got Liar's Dice. That's fun. You got LCR, which I love. Um uh, I'm thinking about quick dice games. I mean, there's just a few. I mean, shoot, yeah. LCR you can buy for a, a Dollar Tree now. Yeah, <clears> LCR <throat> is a fun game. That's that's a good game. Uh, if if I were to say uh, uh, like a go to game for me, uh, my wife and I like this game called Eight and a Half. Let me grab it out here. Here it is. This little game. Hold on. Oh sorry. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the man he's the man you saw that okay yeah, yeah. So, it's a, so she's right it's a reprint las vegas is a reprint and that's a fantastic fun game mm -hmm. really great yeah. game yeah that's a fun game oh uh, let's see Vinny's Felicia, on he says hey Felicia, guys you could do worse you could be driving a truck right now <laughs> which is way worse I yeah. read Vinny. <laughs> yeah, Vinny's watching the show and driving. Here's one. You guys ever play Talisman? I have not. Have you played it? 
No, I have not. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, Sean. I've just I've just never got around to it. A lot of <clears throat> I did get a lot of vintage games this year because I was I had also said that I was not going to do a top 100, but I did yeah. anyway because I did have a couple new ones in there, and I did bring Luke and uh, Bernardo on, and uh, we did a you know a little fun thing that kind of switched things up. It wasn't just me talking. And next year, I may have to do the same thing, just get different people. We get this guy on mm -hmm. here with someone else, uh, Jamie or Vinny, and just kind of go through it because I'm I'm slow. There's there's a there, there is a good list, like a, a 10, 15 game list right now of games I'd love to have added to my collection. Shoot, I could maybe even stretch that out to 20 if I thought really hard. But the thing is, though, it's just getting to that time where you got to pinpoint games in general. I've had to pinpoint a lot now since the girls are getting older and, you know, you have to pay for something called daycare and diapers. Yeah, there are some games I would love to have, but they just cost way too much right now. You know, like, like three like, hundred dollars. Uh, I love that. Yeah, app. Absolutely. They so dream phone for one hundred forty. That's why I can't get dream phone. <laughs> yeah, I, I know uh, your, your your girls would probably love that game eventually. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, oh, thanks. Thank, thank you, Tamale. You, you got to get her on Board Game Giants. I want to hear. I want to hear her Tamale recipe. Yeah, she would tamale. be the first girl that I've had on the show. Which uh, well, there you go. Uh, there you go. Here's done. Like with vintage games, have you ever? And I'm sure you have stories like this. Like when you would bring a game out and it was an older game, and people would be like, "Uh," but then they would play it and then they would love it. Do you have any stories like that? Uh, I don't have any like they uh because my, my gaming group trusts me now. But <laughs> I did have people who were just blown away. Um, the game was called Dynamite. After we played Dynamite, um, he looked up on eBay and he bought a copy immediately. And then and then he started playing, he started getting his friends. He had some other friends and he brought out for them and started playing it for them um, yeah. for a while. I was like, wait, you aren't coming to my house to play Dynamite, but you'll go somewhere else? Because he got his own <laughs> little friends over there to play it. But I mean, it's just that that's the thing. People don't realize because when he when he saw the game for the first time, I remember he's like, What is this again? And he's like, I've never heard of this game before. And he's like, This is amazing. And you know, that that's what I get now. And and the same thing, I'm trying to think of what was the last game that got that reaction. I mean, there's a lot of games on this list here, and I'm looking back at this over here all those oh, yeah. games there maybe i look at it from this point of view i can't remember but every time i'm bringing out one of these games i mean you look at here's one you look at screwball scramble it just came out with an expansion like 35 or 42 years later they came out with an expansion for that game called level two level two is up there at the tippy top yeah i saw your review on that i'm like wow 42 yeah. years after yeah, the 42 years later, I think they came out of the room. and it's fun. It's great. It's a great yeah. game. And and that's the thing about vintage games, man. You can't you can't say, well, they, they're just roll and move. If they were just roll and move, then yeah, I agree. They should go away. But they weren't. I mean, you look at um there's some guy right now reviewing a bunch of Waddington games. I can't remember his name. His name his name escapes me. Plus, I'm not gonna plug him when I'm on your show. Um <laughs> But he's doing all these vintage games right now, uh, Waddington games. And even the bad ones, even the bad ones that he just despises are very neat. Um, he did one about, the, I don't know if you saw it yet, the doggone one, the one you're just putting that little racing dog around a figure eight, basically. I haven't seen that one. <clears throat> and wherever he stops, you do something. You either grab a bone or go again or do something. It's a neat concept. Now, he said the game is kind of mind-numbingly dull and everything, and he do doesn't like it. But he did admit the mechanic was really good. And and the thing is, uh, you look at Warrington, you look at Ravensburger. Um, now, and we're not just talking about the the, mo the powerful Milton Bradley, Mattel, Hasbro combo, which which all of them cr had great games too. But you look at some of these other people, the outliners there, that put it with some good stuff. I remember – I remember looking at Enchanted Forest when I was a kid. And I, that, I that, the last time I played Enchanted Forest, I was in grade school. But I remember it was really cool because it's basically memory you're trying to find underneath the trees. But, man, they were so much more creative, it seems like, in the U.K. or 
and those small the smaller retailers uh what's the one from the 50s ideal who did a few of those games too and I just mm -hmm. like it that they thought outside the box. One that you and I marveled about the first time we ever talked was Chopper Strike, which yeah. I don't see anyone has never implemented that mechanic again, where you have a clear tray over a board. Because, you know, flying flying pieces can be on the clear tray, flying above the board, firing at the That makes so much sense. They should use that. No one, to my knowledge, no one else has used that. But I there's a lot of... No, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, there, there's a lot of them because uh, I will plug Mark because he's a nice guy, unlike the other guy. Um, but uh, Attic Raiders, he did a um, one about Screaming Genie. And the screen, I don't know if you saw this, but it was a balloon. And you're basically letting air out of the balloon. That's the Screaming Genie. The Genie is a balloon in there and you're trying to get these gems out without releasing too much air in there. And I was like, that's a simple mechanism, simple idea. And yet it works. It works yep. for this. And I, I consistently see this in board games, not on my own, but just reviewed by other people. Now that we do have, you know, these other three, two from the UK, one from an island, you know, since we both have them now, I, I actually am wiser in uh, vintage games. Because just when I thought, because to be honest, Norm, before these guys came around, if you had told me, Matt, have you, I, I would have told you I've seen it all for vintage games. I would have told you that. Yeah. I was saying, hey, look, I did I did a deep study. No, I didn't. Right. I didn't do any kind of study, it seems like now, because there are board games and there's gonna be more vintage games coming out. Um, someone showed me one, Bernardo did, I'll give him credit for this one, that uses a projector. And when I finally figured out how the game worked, that's the smartest game in the world. Why didn't they do more games like that? So it's just it's just really neat how they took so many different mechanics they thought outside the box back then and it wasn't just roll and move sadly the big the big box retailers they only gave us roll and move if it was a kid's game right. and that's where vintage games get a bad rap is because you think oh yeah roll and move that's what you like no that's not every game every game is not just roll and move they now some were and a lot were a lot lot mass market things were but there are if you if you look, there are some smart games in there. You've reviewed tons of them. I think my first yeah. review for you was a uh, Thunder Road. I think it was Thunder Road. That's a fun game. It, it may have been Sub Search. I can't remember, but I, I saw Sub Search and then Thunder Road, and I was like, wait, this is the same guy who's reviewing these, and I instantly subscribed. Well, thank you. <laughs> I said, oh, he's not just a pretty face. I see he's not just a pretty face on the internet. Well, I, I try to maintain the pretty face at least. <laughs> you do what you can, right? <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you, you know, I've, it's just, you're saying with me, like when I've watched Luke's channel, Bernardo's channel, Vinny's channel, you know, I, I discover more games I did not know about, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, Vinny, Vinny, man, Vinny, Vinny brings out, that's another one, Vinny. And I, I should mention Jamie too, since I mentioned everyone here, Vinny. I guess, but Vinny and Jamie, Vinny, Vinny brings out, several games uh, out there that I've never knew about, but then every once in a while he'll get me on one that I was like, Whoa, I, this is new. And uh, it's, it's surprising to me. It's interesting. I mean, Vinny has convinced me to get um, this game up here. Who was it? Um, by Ravensburger. Fantastic game for kids, electronic co-op who done it. And I just recently played that game with my niece and younger nephews who are slowly getting into games. They thought was great. They thought it was great. They kept, and I mean, it's very thematic. It sounds great. That was one for him. Jamie, at the other hand, Jamie, and Jamie knows this. I've already talked to him. I've already have a list of games that I want due to Jamie. One is still in print, which we talked about this, that Marrakesh game where the you, you have cloth. You're laying, you're a rug dealer, I guess. You're laying rugs, rugs on the board. So it's actually pieces of cloth you're putting yeah. on the board area control in a way and i was like shut up well the game's still in print today and get it on amazon so it's on my uh wish list so it's it's just it's crazy i don't there's someone else you need to block too by the way norm oh who's that? Uh, this guy this, i'll tell you when you see him we have many games there's there's there. for you, Matt. oh awesome awesome glad thank you i'm glad i'm glad that happened see this guy yeah. this guy's a spammer <laughs> this guy's a spammer. I think he needs to go. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Um, no, but see, they always come up, and like I said, um, man, Jamie had a few hits. He had that wrestling game. I don't know if you saw that one, where you're rolling dice, but you're going different ways, trying to get the special move of your wrestler to get bonus points or something. I was like, that's really interesting. And, and, and he finds, and like I said, and then of course you, of course, for years influenced a lot of my collection. I mean, I, I can, I could almost walk down this list of vintage games and tell you who uh, convinced me to get what game. Well, I'm glad that it, to be honest, a lot of it wasn't on my own. A lot of it wasn't on my own. The first, the first year it was me stabbing in the dark and then looking at what you found. Yeah, what it, you, you're right over here. That's you. You. <laughs> That's OK. I, oh, I did. I got you the right direction. The first you time. got me in the right direction. There you go. Exactly. Hey, here's a here's a question for you. And, uh, and you've done a top 10 list. Um, is there a particular game? I, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I'll go ahead and just mention this. Like we I saw your top 10 list and you had Luke and um, a couple other people on there. And I noticed yeah, that Luke. I, I can't remember the other guy's name either, but keep going. Yeah, um, all of you, and I agree with this completely, have probably a couple of games that will make all of our top ten lists. We're very close. Um, really? And, yeah. Um, Let me ask you. You don't have to tell me where it would play, because if so, we're, I'm going to have you on the channel then. We'll do this. Um, yeah. Would B Bermuda Triangle be in your top ten, yes or no? Um, that one... I really like that game a lot, but it probably wouldn't be in the top ten. Okay, okay, because I was shocked that they both had it in their top top ten. There were I think there were certain games I knew they would have. There were certain games I did not know they would have in there. But that's that's the cool thing about it, though. It doesn't matter what game you have in your top ten. I'm just happy that you appreciate vintage games when it's all said and done. Of course, I mean your your yeah. favorite game could be you know, Monopoly or Sorry or Clue. And it'd be like, okay, I feel bad for you if it was Clue. But other than that, I'd be like, okay. I hate, mm -hmm. I hate Clue. I always hated Clue as a kid, too. I think one of the things I really enjoy about the games is anytime, you know, if I have company over, I'll bring out like one of those big larger than live games like Fireball Island or something like that. And it's just, they, they have never seen anything like this before. They might play card games yeah. or like a full and move game. You know, but they've never heard of, they've never seen a 3D board. Or they've never seen a board that large or seen a certain. I'll, I'll be honest, j just the base game of Fireball Island, which you know what, to be honest, I want to play this year. I'm going to play. I didn't play it last year for the first time like ever because, you know, the the restoration games, ho, 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 they made a pretty version. But even if you bring out the base version, that's impressive. That's mm -hmm. impressive. And to me, it has a lot of uh, nostalgia, too, because that's the one I grew up playing for years. But if my little, you know, my 13 year old self flash forward in time and see that what they did with F Fireball Island 30 years later, mm -hmm. oh man, he'd be, he'd be ecstatic, you know, and we definitely oh. play. Yeah. Fireball Island is a game my family and I all play and we all love it. It's always a close race. You know, do you, do you remember that um, commercial on YouTube, that, that sales pitch? that some company made to Mattel or Hasbro or Milton Bradley back in the day about making expansions to Fireball Island, the original game. Yeah, I did I, see that. I, I think I showed you that video, but they were talking about, you know, redoing the board, but making like little curved inlays where you could place little extra islands. You could buy the expansion or not. So you can make the island as big as you want. Now, the idea was limited to what Restoration Games did. Basically, they were saying the same type of game, except that every mini island just took you a longer it was the same island you had to go around you just had more ops options to move around places and more things that could hurt you more fireball yeah. could, that could do certain things and it was really neat and i was thinking because i remember thinking man if they ever make this take my money take my and restoration games goes can we have your money absolutely here you just write in what number i'll give you the blank check i'll tell you what i'm hoping that I'm curious to see what Restoration Games is going to put out as far as uh, some more reprints because um, they've done Fireball Island, Dark Tower, and I think they had the rights to Omega Virus, if I understand correctly. Uh, oh, hold on. I, I want to answer. I don't know if we're going to be answering questions in the chat here, but uh, Tim612's question 
Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that one, I, I can tell you this. It's been, I'll, I'll be honest, my nephews are getting a little too old now. I'm having trouble. Uh, last year, a majority, not all, but a majority of the games were played with the misses again. Because my nephews, when they want to play a game now, because they're getting older, they want to play one of the older games. Um, but I will say before that, and my niece is kind of growing up now to where she can start playing a few games too. So I'll, I'll get the vintage games back on the table again. But the thing is, though, playing it with my nephews, watching them grow up. I mean, you think about it. It's been six, seven years with my nephews playing board games with them, or maybe even longer than that. Um, playing these vintage games with them was great for them. They had so much fun, um, especially in a, in, a, in a day and age now where video games rule supreme. And they always like video games, and they still love video games today. Yeah. But – um, as board games go, as vintage games go, they would always, I used to bring over boxes of vintage games and we'd sit there and play them, you know, at their house on Saturdays is back before I had the girls and we would have the best time. We'd have the absolute best time. And I can't wait to share those same experiences with my girls when they get older, you know, we're going to start with mind numbingly dumb games and that's okay. And then we're going to move into the vintage games that I have. And that's great. And there's a few that my wife has that she can't wait to play with them. I'll be honest. You watch and see where Barbie Dream Date is going to rank five years from now on my collection. It's going to be up there, maybe top 50. But the thing is, though, even Barbie Dream Date, which I told you I played with my wife a long time ago. And I was like, this is actually thematic. I mean, they did a good job with they did you know something called Barbie. They did a good job with it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, that that's the thing, though, that the, those experiences, man, they're just they, they enjoy it. They love the game. They can win the game. A lot of those. So one of the biggest complaints is luck. Right. There's a luck factor that's in all games. If you get the right card, if you roll the right die. OK, so it levels mm -hmm. the playing field. Chill out. Board yeah. games are to enjoy. They're to they're win fun. or lose. You should sit there and enjoy it either way. I mean, we had a game game night the other last weekend where and it, this has never happened before everyone at the table won one of the games mm -hmm. you know it's never happened usually i'm running away with the trophy or you know it, it gets split two and two or something you know or yeah you know, how, however many it gets split among, but everyone got to share a win but everyone had a fun game in fact uh my friend who he did the worst at a certain game. He told me that was his favorite. I said, "What?" I'll say, what's your favorite game of the night? Usually it's always the game they won. Nah, one of them said that one. I said, you got killed in that game. He went, yeah, but I had the most fun. I said, well, that's what counts. That's yeah. what counts. Yeah, um, we haven't, for me, Jax is like, and he's going to be four soon. I think we just taught him Yeti and my spaghetti. So uh, <laughs> I'll be... Uh, I don't know how long it'll be until he'll actually start playing games with me. Well, actually, my wife made a video of us playing. You remember that big giant Kerplunk game that we have? You remember that? It's like the Kerplunk, but it's like you, one that you put in the yard. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jax was uh, pulling out the sticks, and the balls were not falling, and I was playing with him, and he almost beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was yeah. only one stick away. He pulled out one stick, and all the balls fell, but if – if, if he would have got that one, I would have lost. I was like, I would have just lost to my three-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's the, that's the, that's the joy of it. That's the fun of it. And I, and I, and I hope my girls would win a little bit and oh. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, even on my game nights when I'm playing with new people, um, I'll try my best to help them out. I'll also, cause I know it's, you, you kind of get lost in some games. Like I'm saying these, these adult games here, but uh, also, I don't mind throwing the game just to give them a win either, just as long as everyone's having a good experience. Because um, to me, it's it's more about just the experience of getting there, playing together with people, and just having a fun time. And these vintage games, man, just about any of them, you can just unhook your brain on and just enjoy it. And that's that's the beauty of it. Yeah, and a lot of them don't have, like, a lot of rules either, you know. You can learn it in, like, under 10 minutes, you know. Um, and you know when you're when you're pressed for time sometimes that that means a lot but uh oh yeah they make great filler games absolutely yeah, they really do uh let's see if i have any other questions here uh oh what's this that was that kid that slammed marbles down the idol like a cheater <laughs> matt cheat nah, well, matt was, a liar 
<laughs> Calls her liar. Um, Jay's waiting for Letters of Whitechapel to arrive. Let me know how that one is, Jay. That's one I do need to play. Yeah. I hear a good uh, thing. That's like Scotland Yard, except for a, 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 an upgraded version of Scotland Yard for anyone who knows vintage games. I have Scotland Yard's a good game, but uh, boy, that, that that does take that. That's a tough one, you know. Do you know true story? I've never I've never played Scotland Yard. As popular as that game is, it's one of the vintage games I've never played. Um, that was on my list. I think it was, I haven't played it much. Um, but you know, you're trying to pinpoint Mister X, and one person's Mister X. You know, trying to uh, escape or whatever. Boy, that's a tough game, man. But uh, I love the the. I think that's one of the earlier games, maybe that where people would be having camaraderie with you, each other, trying to find the one player that is Mister X. You know, it was kind of like a co op uh, of sorts. Um, I don't know when they made miss that game, but when do you know when the co co op started? Like the co op games. I mean, if you think about it, there's been co op games for a while. Depending on what you mean by co-op, like you got the top secret game that I think Vinny uh, reviewed not too long ago where you're trying to, someone is the traitor. You're trying to figure out who it is. You have murderous mur murder. She wrote, which is also yeah. the kind of you, you're, you're, you're not working together, but you're, you are trying to find out which one of you is the traitor, but a co-op as a vintage, I mean, seriously, co-op for vintage can be well, Omega virus. That yeah, one's that, me right in the face without me having to look at these. Omega Virus would be one, which was a big one. That's a 90s game. You had, there's another one too that I'm trying to figure out where it is. Uh, Break the Safe. Yeah, Break that's the a Safe good. Is, is a great one too. So they've been around for a while. And I don't know what the first co op game is because back then all vintage games did have to be competitive, but there were some that were co op as well. Maybe those are the only ones that I have here that you're trying to yeah. get done. But, you know, everyone's trying to stop a certain thing or do something. That's 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 the uh, the benefit. I don't know where the first co-op game came game uh, game came from. But I do have a I used to say for years that my gaming group hates co-ops. Well, I have a new gaming group and uh, <laughs> they, they're not they're not they're not as opposed to co-ops as the other ones were. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I would say if I were to guess, I think Omega Virus was probably one of the first ones um, that was a co-op. Yeah. That, and in a way, they had to where you can attack players because co-ops had been kind of unheard of back then. Mm -hmm. So even then, yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah, Omega Virus for anybody who's watching, I think that made at least our top fifteen for everybody that we uh, know who collects games, older games. Absolutely. Uh, what are your top five abstract strategy games now? My top five? Uh, hmm. Well, I'll, I might be able to think of a couple. What do you think, Matt? You got any abstracts? Um, I, I mean, you, you talk about abstract games, and there, there's not going to be that many for me because I'm not really an abstract strategy guy. There's a lot of vintage games that are abstract. There's a lot of... Um, um, what's it called? Uh, advanced games that can be too. I mean, obviously I have Santorini. Mm -hmm. That's one, but it's basically for my nephews. I don't know if you can call, um, well, it has abstract tendencies in it. So I guess you couldn't. I mean, there's one, if you look at Macala, which would be considered abstract, there's a board game called Crusaders I Will Be Done, which uses the Macala uh, mechanism, but isn't strictly abstract. Uh, there's one I almost got the other day, uh, but decided against it, Torres. I don't know if you've heard about that one. That's an older Ravensburger game. It looks interesting. It looks, and right now it's super cheap at Ollie's. <laughs> And, uh, but I, I decided not to get it because abstract is not usually my thing. Like Azul, not an Azul fan, but, yeah. uh, you look at, uh, what was the other game? Um, Maharani by Queen Games. I can't find it back there. Basically the same game, a little bit different where you're kind of matching, but gathering points. Um, mm -hmm. one of my, one of the gamers in my gaming group 
likes photosynthesis, which in my opinion would be abstract. I don't know if that's the definition yeah. of one, but I believe it is. Um, there's a lot of little games. Like I know Hive is a popular one, but I don't. I, that the abstract games usually are going to not be on my list, except for Santorini. I know Santorini is abstract, but as you know, that is like way down my list. Yeah. So for me, it's going to be a little bit harder. But what are there any other games for you, Norm? Um, this I don't know if this would be considered abstract, but I have a game called Tetris Link. Um, yeah, that, probably so. Um, that that's that's a pretty cool little pretty game, pretty cool game. And uh, I was looking at my three on bookshelf collection. Uh, oh yeah, you got a lot there. That um, would be considered abstract. I would bizarre be considered abstract. Abstract. I don't know if that would be or not. I don't um, know. I don't. I don't know about that one. But but the thing is though, I mean, abstract games for me aren't. You're you're not going to usually see that much. I mean, I used to have Othello back in the day. Um, Mexico's really area control. Um, I'm just trying to run through the list of games in my collection. I don't really have that many that would be. They have abstract. What's it called? Uh, mechanisms here and there, but they're not completely abstract like some of the other ones I mentioned. So no, I'm not really that big on abstract games. Yeah, um, we have some. We just don't play them a lot. Um, yeah, but I mean, 3M made some pretty cool ones. Jumping was a is a, a good one. It's that like was it. Jumping. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah, and no, Mon Cal really. Cal was a game, and what's the one we have? Oh, oh, Re from 3M. That's a good game. Uh, Man Call is something a game I like a lot, but we don't really pull out a lot of the abstracts ourselves. Um, right. I, I know. I mean, I mean, people like Go. Remember that? That's a classic one there. And you right. got, um, man, my my brain is just locking up here when it comes to abstract games. There was one, I think it was abstract, but it was lifted where you had that band over your head and you had the crane. You're mm -hmm. trying to move pieces and stack them in a different order. Yeah, um, which was fun, but I don't for abstract games. I just don't get into them as much. But, well, here's one. Um, you, uh, what, what's your one of your? You, you like to do the war games like Conquest of the Empire. Um, yeah, I love is, 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 that, is there another vintage one that you like that's a war game? That's a great question. Um, they came out with another game very similar to that one called Blood Feud in New York, which is a, a lot of fun. There are some differences there. I really do like that one. There's Conquest of Nerath, which is it's been it's it's 15 years old. So in my opinion, it would be considered a, a vintage, and it's that that's all battle. You have Dinosaur from Germany, which Bernardo would love to have. Um, that's an all-out battle game. Battle games are really fun. I don't have that besides the ones I just mentioned as just going to battle. Well, I mean, you got tank battle, which yeah. Norm and I played once together. Norm cheated. Mm -hmm. And then you got yeah. sharper strike battleship. Mm -hmm. um, but there, yeah, you, uh, uh, screaming Eagle, Eagles is a battle game that you have, right? Well, I have the reprint, the uh, mission command series. Oh, mission command series. Yeah. Any of the mission command series, those are fun. I have the original, you know, tank battle, but the Mission Command one has has better looking pieces, I think. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah. it plays a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, I, have, I have, if we're talking vintage here, I have Sub Search. Sub Search is uh, to me. I got rid of my battleship game. I gave it. I gave it away after trying to get my own little original one because I yeah. realized I want to play Sub. If it came down to two, I want to play Sub Search. Sub like Search is it. a better game. It's a great game. But yeah, I do. I do enjoy battle games. I don't have that many. I think if you would have caught me ten years ago, I'd have been way more into battle games than I am now. Yeah, we have. Uh, well, let's see. I had a couple. Uh, Risk Lord of the Rings is really good. Uh, if you like Risk, I, I like the twist they put on it. And then uh, Samurai Swords uh, or the Shogun game. Uh, that's a really good one too. I enjoy. Right. Um, I don't know. Can you show us your collection, Matt? Are no. you using your okay, yes, of course I can. Yeah. Okay. So you're ready to see the vintage ones? Let me make yeah, sure let's see. out of the way and let's look at a collection here. Here we go around the room here. First off, right. in, in the side here, you have Temple Run, Roller Coaster, Bargain Hunter, How Succeed in Business that I've been trying. I played that game. It was really fun. 
Um, NBA basket, oh, such a great game for two players. Uh, the X-Men games, there's Thunder Road, there's Tank Battle like we've talked about. There are the Dark World Trilogy. Let me see if I can get this lower here. So let's see. Whoop, 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 whoop. Hold on. Making it dizzy now. Trilogy, I would love to have the trilogy, but it would cost like I yeah, probably have to a lot. One for the pot, which is a great tea tea game with water. You use water. Uh, yeah. You could, I guess you could use tea. Smurfs Ahoy. Uh, would that be considered abstract? I don't know. You're balancing Smurfs on the show. Uh, you got Ready Set Spaghetti. Fantastic. Luke found me that one. Dragon Strike, which is one of the Mrs. Family's favorite games. Superpowers. Uh, eBay, of course, really good. Where's the Beef? I love those games. And then at the top is Captain Crunch. And I fell asleep at the wheel on getting two PVC Captain Crunches for five bucks on eBay. Oh, really? See, that, that's, that's what came with the game with those PVC toys. And I don't want to pay five bucks for one or ten bucks for one figure. But right. for two, I'm like, well, two for five bucks. I'll get that. And I, and I fell asleep on the deal and missed it. So I want to get four Captain Crunches and paint their, their toes red, green, and yellow. So you can have different palms in the game. But um, that's a unique game because it's serial based. Now, we'll kind of go around. Ooh, make sure. Come on. Get around here. There you go. What's wrong with this? Okay, hold on. I got to take you through here. Hold on. Whoa, we're going everywhere, man. Getting sick. All right. <laughs> Does this make you sick? I'm kidding. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So, of course, you have King Oil, Mystery Mansion, Legend of Zagar, Tornado Rex. Great. All these are solid games. Um, and the other side, solid games, too. You got a Mega Virus. Dinosaur. That's the, di that's the German dinosaur game I was telling you about. Uh, someone had said, can I see it? That's it. It's really awesome. Star Trek, the game. That's from the motion picture movie. It is very good. And then, of course, as you see, uh, well, Forbidden Bridge is underneath there. Yeah. Um, good game. You have the Titanic game. Sinking of the Titanic, that's a rare game to find. Uh, it's now called, a, it was called Abandoned Ship. I think only the first printing came out as Sinking of the Titanic because they thought, oh, you're making a board game about a real-life tragedy. How about not? So I get I get trade requests for that game every blue moon, but... For right now, it's staying in my collection. Bejeweled is right underneath that. Great game. Polar Dare, Go for Broke, Hotel, Rumble in the Jungle. That was one that Luke got me. Um, that Luke got me hooked on to. That I went ahead and said, "Ooh, I gotta, I gotta try out that, that game." Fun. That looks like a fun game. Oh, it, it, it is. Of course, there's the there's the big whopping one. That Ice Cube game. Holy cow! Yeah, that was a heck of a find. You find ice cube, I got Ice Cube for a trade for a twenty or thirty dollar game. Yeah, this game's worth five hundred bucks, I think. But yeah. as as uh, Bernardo and Luke showed me, they have kind of reprinted it as the Sorry Olaf game and some other game in German, which really came close to to copying Ice Cube. Um, Lost Pet Valley of Dinosaurs is Wyington Games. Great, of course, Wyington's right there again with Little Green Men. Um, yeah, I think. Let me see. Here we go. Luke, Bernardo, that's Dynamite, Shark Attack, uh, Mr. Creepy's Tomb of Doom, which is really fun, too. Uh, this game I bought right before seeing Norm one day. I bought um, that. Can't stop. We played it that day. It was a lot of fun. That is it. And this game is still in print, but you, you can get the vintage version or the new version. Doesn't matter. It's the same game. Yeah, great uh, game. Best Batman game around. The minis look great. Cubert card game. Not many card games in my collection, but I love that Cubert one. This is this game still sells for super cheap. And you gotta get it. Yeah. I think it's the minis and pieces alone. It's just I see this game for five dollars even. I'm like, why? It's worth twenty. It's great. Yeah. Of what about Screwball Scramble? Mystic Skull, a new add-on from this 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 year. Got that in a trade too. Full and this is this is not. I mean. It's a, that's from Ideal 2, who came up with some good games. But this one, uh, Mystic Skull, was a really uh, good find for me to find complete because a lot of times they're broken or missing pieces. Sure. Um, a Day with Ziggy. Oops, sorry. A Day with Ziggy. I bought that game because my grandmother was a Ziggy fan. and yeah. uh, But it, it turned out to be a great game, and my wife really loves this game. She loves the Ziggy game. Uh, yeah. Crocodile Hunter. 
Uh, actually, my good friend Spencer, who doesn't do board game <laughs> reviews, put me on that game. Uh, go for it. Fun. Magical Maze. This is Mark's from uh, Attic Raiders. This is the first one he turned me on to. First game he turned me on to there. But you got Dungeon Dice. You, sir, were the reason I got American Dream. Oh, thank you. Because uh, uh, I'd seen it uh, at a flea market for like a dollar. And then you were talking about, you reviewed the game. I was like, oh, I got to get that one. Um, yeah. Then up here, we got that Crocodile Dennis game that is so much fun. Masterpiece, duels, hard game to get. But this is the uh, original version of now it's called Unmatched by Restoration right. Games. Mall Madness, great game. There's the bumper cars, the original bumper cars we talked about earlier. Yeah. Chicken out Bulldog. Bulldog Dozer is one of my little niece's favorite games to play right now. There's the there's the Chopper Strike, Web of Gold, which I found I found Web of Gold from a uh, comp book, an ad in an old comic book from the 80s is how I found Web of Gold. Uh, of course, that's the board game that's going to make board games great again. Trump. Um, it, yeah, it didn't get elected to my list this year, but that's because there's a lot of vote-in ballots, but that's something different. Anyway, you, you, know, have, you have Captain yeah. Gold. I, th I, think, I think you were Captain Bones. Yeah, I, I, I had that game. I found that one at a thrift store, the one with the... the you're the one that convinced me to get that one, uh, and of course, uh, Bernardo was Godzilla. Uh, Total Action was Luke. He, he got me to get that one. That's a great game by Ideal, and, and just another... I don't even like soccer. Oh, hey, I think that would be abstract, wouldn't it? I don't know. Yeah. It's a kinetic game. I'm but it as that, abstract. that is a great game. I love Total Action Football. Shark Mania, of course, fun. And then as we go up a little bit higher here, that's Fireball Island kind of crushed underneath all these other ones. But you have Buzzard, which is fun. Snard Bark, Knockout, Ask Xander, which this would be fun at game nights, man. Ask Xander's a fun one. It from the pit and Crash Canyon. Yeah, Crash Canyon's on my list to get one day. And Vinny, I was, thank you. Yeah, Gold is another Ravensburger game. Of course, the Pac Man game. The game I got that game the day the day y'all saw me and Norm's video. That next day, I went to Target and I saw that game in the store. I was like, shut up. Yeah. Luke got me into hang in there. Rattler, Pizza Party, Pirates Gold was Bernardo again. So a few here and there, but yeah. That's the vintage game. And then the rest of them are regular. I can show you the other games too, but yeah. Um, but those are the vintage games in my collection. Oh, let me get this thing back on the stand there. There we go. Um, and uh, it's it's really it's really so much fun. I forgot that you couldn't see it. Well, you probably could have seen it in there. But yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. That's where I keep all my vintage games. So there's not much. Someone asked me... Uh, on my channel uh, yesterday, I said, how do you, He's, he was looking at my shelves going, so what's the order on your shelves? It's not alphabetical. Is it by publisher, designer? I went, no, it's by space where I yeah, just throw things, things on there. And I mean, one day, one day, um, you know, maybe when I move, I'll, I'll rearrange these, these, these things the way I want them. Cause I, I do want them in a certain order. Um, it's just that that's going to take a lot of my time that I don't have right, right yeah. now. I'll ask you one more question, Matt, and I love your collection. Um, and I'll tell you anybody who's watching who, who loves in his board games, we just love him because, oh, here's a good question, Matt. Uh, and maybe you answered this. What is it about vintage board games that you like, or that's different than the current games out there? Yeah, sure. That's an, that's a great question. Um, charming. They're charming. They are intelligent, uh, way ahead of their time. Uh, they're easy. They're fast to play, and they're fun. The fun factor has to be there for me to keep any of those games in my collection, and uh, it is. It is. It is definitely there. The, they're just fun, and then plus, uh, I do like uh, the people who – some people who complain about it say, yeah, but there's too much random luck. That's the great equalizer for adults and children, because a lot of these are called a lot of these are called family games, not yeah. games for kids, but games for families. So to keep things, you know, evened out, mom and dad can lose to their kid if their kid has all the right roles or he happens to get the right cards in his hand. And that's mm -hmm. the fun thing. That's the great equalizer 
for those vintage games. And not all vintage games were created for kids. A lot of them were created for adults. I actually have some in the back, actually, now that I thought about it. A stack because you, you didn't see Mr. President, uh, one of my 3M games. They're kind of oh. stuck in the back of those shelves, but that uh, is a fantastic game. Mr. President is my favorite 3M game. It's my favorite three, 3M game by far. Absolutely love. And when I bring that out for it's only for two players, but when I brought it out to my wife and we started playing it, she didn't really understand anything. But then we started counting the votes. She was into it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't remember. I think I was starting to collect the 3M games when I got the Mr. President. And I think that game came out in the late sixties, but you know, I just love the way they set the board up. I mean, you know, having, using it as a ballot box, using yes, the box. That's so smart. Oh my gosh. So smart. I love utilizing the box. Here's the thing. How many vintage games do that? Yeah. Um, not many. Not many. That. that one may be the only one. They use, they used, um, gosh, they, they, they had so many great ideas and, ideas back then uh to make games like 3d boards and the spinner and just and water and all these things you know um that's one of the reasons why i love them because i don't see unless it's a kid's game many games anymore that utilize those kind of things to be cards or you know or mad or something you know which are great but yeah i just there's just something about those older games that have these ideas that just they somehow were able to take an idea and make it into a game that was really fun. You know, and, and a little bit of a shameless plug for my channel, but guys, you can go on my channel. I actually ranked all of my vintage games. Um, mm -hmm. I had 118 or 117 total. And so I ranked them and um, whatever. Hey, Jamie, where was our invitation to go to Disney world? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Like it would have been nice. <laughs> it would have been like, just a, like a common curse. Say, Hey guys, I'm going to go to Disney World. I know you guys maybe would like to do that with me. I don't, I don't know. I don't get that. I mean, what were you just going with your family? I mean, come on, man. You need to go with us. You know, speaking of which, I asked Vinny this. Um, he has a bunch of like Disney Disney board games. Um, do you have any Disney themed board games that you really like? I mean, I love Villainous. That's more recent. Um, but I know that uh, are there are any Disney ones that you have. That's a great question. I have the Disney World game, which is okay. It's not the best game. It's where you're going around Disney World trying to go to these different areas and make it out. Um, right. Me and my wife just like, it looks really pretty. Do I have any other Disney games? No, I don't think so. Quartz got rethemed as Snow White and the Seven Dwarves game, which I definitely would have got that version. I thought that version was nice. I don't have Villainous. Villainous, a lot of people tell me about is really good, but I don't have that game. Well, next time you come over, I'll show it to you. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so I guess my answer is no. I do not have that many Disney-themed games. Not, not, not because I don't want them, just because I just don't – I just uh, didn't get that many. Sadly, a lot of the Disney-themed vintage games were just roll and move. Disney was very uncreative or hired yeah. an uncreative staff. Um, however, though, Luke, if you look at the UK versions of Disneyland, the board game or something like that, that looks interesting. That looks really good. All right. Let me go to a couple more questions here. Sure. Uh, what are your thoughts on the new Hero Quest re-release from Hasbro? Uh, I'm bummed out. My vintage copies and expansions will be less rare. Um, Hero Quest is a game. I love Hero Quest. Um, I'm, I haven't seen what the expansion is going to look like. Um, I do know that game, if you try to get like the expansions now, it's going to cost you so much money. It's just ridiculous. But they've got everything online now to where you can print stuff. So that's good. Um, I'll have to see. I'm curious to see what Hasbro is going to do with it. I think they're going to keep everything the same pretty much. But I'm kind of curious what they're going to do with like the figures and the board and what they're going to do right. with it. Um, but yeah, Hero Quest is one of my favorite games. Um, and personally, I'm in the unpopular opinion of Dark World that I just love. I've never played Hero Quest, to be fair, though. Um, someone else commented, and they're right. I for totally forgot. I do have DuckTales, Rescue Rangers, Darkwing Duck, and Tailspin in my class. I totally forgot about that. Thank you. Yeah, those were the game, the rolling moves I think you were talking about. <laughs> A lot I of them are. One day. A lot of them are. Yeah. All right. 
Matt, last question for you. Um, yep. I want to thank everybody for sh uh, for coming. Um, let me just get to a couple more of the comments here. Sure. Uh, let's just see here. Uh, Vinny, thank you again. I really appreciate Vinny. Uh, Vinny, he's 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 a good friend now. Uh, he's okay. Uh, what? Uh, okay, here we go. What's uh, the future for you as far as uh, reviewing games? You got any games lined up? I mean, with vintage games, no, but as Christmas comes in, I, I did give out a list of vintage games. Of course, any eBay gift cards I get will go straight toward vintage games. And I do hope to, uh, I do hope to, I don't have a mark on how many I want to add, but you're looking at anywhere from 10 to 20 games I'd like to add in. I'm kind of have to be particular with the games I get now. And that's on both sides now, just cause there's not as much money flowing around, but um yeah so uh, hopefully after right now on my channel i'm just doing my top i'm ranking all my games now my regular games so if you want to check that out you can the, the vintage game list is already out there all my vintage games got ranked the reason i love them and why and then after afterwards we'll get back to reviewing some of those great games um uh, it's gonna be fun looking forward to it man and uh It'll be, I, there, someone's asking, when is game night with everyone? I wonder if there's a way if all of us could virtually play a game together. Well, we thought about that, but I don't know how we could play a game together. I mean, unless we had all the same copy of the game and we kept people's it – it wouldn't have cards. It would just have dice and pieces. I mean, you have to find the right game. I'm sure we could, but you have to find the right game for that. But that'd be fun. I would yeah. like to – and this is one I wanted to do on my channel. And maybe, maybe as my, as my game in – my, my intake of games are getting are slowing down now. Maybe then I'll start doing just playthroughs with myself or with other people. Cause playing through a lot of those. And I thought about playing through a lot of those vintage games would be fun too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, well, if we ever can do a virtual board game now, that'd be fun. Um, yes, it see. would. This one quick. Send me your, uh, send me a way to play a fellow with you. Helpful. All right, Matt. Well, hey, uh, it was a real pleasure having you on. Uh, everyone, this is Matt Wilkins. Check out his channel, Star Wars Expanded Universe, but he has got a ton of vintage board games and regular it's just called, games. My channel is just called Matt Wilkins. Just Matt Wilkins, yeah. I do, I do Star Wars book reviews, too. Yeah, he's, he's a great talking about board games. I love it. <laughs> yeah. we, he has a lot of great stuff, you guys. He's a great guy. Check him out. All right, Matt. Well, man, it was great seeing you again, man. Thanks so much yeah, again. Yeah, it's been fun, man. Thanks for having yeah. me on. You're very welcome, and we'll definitely do this again soon. All right, and say hi to your family and your girls for me. I will. I will. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. We'll see you soon. And bye.